Hello, hello. I forgot my plate to be clean, so I am flipping one of my old ones around inside out here. So I can show a clean slate of paints. All right, so our first few colors of paint we'll be using are white, yellow, green, blue, a little bit of purple. Um, if you don't have purple, it's not um, super vital, but uh, if you have a pink or a red to make a purple, it'll help out a lot uh, for kind of the bottom area of, of the background. Um, the gist of this painting is actually real nature -y. um I like to um, think of the top here as a lighting source and then the bottom it gets darker um, so that it doesn't take over the colors of the bee and the colors of the flowers on the bottom um, but nature uh, paintings are kind of a good uh, beginning for for anybody who wants to get into painting um, I know a lot of people gravitate toward nature and uh, sceneries and anything that has kind of a lot of life to it so this is a good kind of beginner beginner's guide to um, flowers for sure and um, also kind of a um, a subject which is the bee um, but it's a nice little beginner guide to getting into nature -y uh, paintings and kind of placement and um, really the delicacy of, of the different subjects you're going to be working with today. So uh, that being said, we can go ahead and get started here. And I'm actually going to start with this big brush and we're going to rinse it and dry it off really well. And where I'd like to start um, is actually at the top with white. Very top left corner here. Um, if you need a reference guide for the painting, it's over this way. And there's a couple of steps I'm going to take a little different than I did on there, but feel free to um, go back in and hit those spots if you like them. Uh, this is the first one actually with the white up in this corner. 
and I'm keeping I'm keeping a nice direction going kind of slanted um, the difference here is over there it's more yellow over here it's gonna be a little bit more on the white but that way it has a little bit more air to breathe a little bit more space in there from there I'll go to the yellow start adding that in but I don't want to go all the way up here I just want to brush it in probably to about there and just continue it downward you can keep this as light as you want you can add white to the yellow keep it real light and faded you can make it more yellow if you like it more yellow Go up there a little bit. At this point, I like to dry brush it. I like to dry the brush on the towel and just carry the rest of this as far as it'll go. There we go. As we come down, you can start getting heavier with the yellow if you'd like. Maybe mix, mix some some of that green with your yellow and make a light green. Start adding that in as we're coming down. And I'll say this is more uniform than how I painted the original. Um, the original was real splotchy in the back because there's a lot of things going on. So we'll switch up gears here in a little bit and just go more splotchy. But for now, we'll just lay down some basic colors. You can add some white white to the green to make it a light green come back up here with yellow keeping that direction direction is everything or this light green Rub it in if you got the stubborn canvas. Keeping it real simple. At any point you can continue to add yellows to keep it bright. Or you can add white to keep it light. From there we're gonna start getting a little darker. So regular green and come in down. If you wanna leave some splotches like that, you can. This is a real blurry background. It's not anything specific. We're just giving this an environmental kind of feeling. If your arm is getting tired, so is mine. This is a good workout. Good workout for the arm. We thought you'd get art and you'd also get some exercise. And keep that direction. It doesn't have to stay just completely slanted like this. You could actually even bring it over this way. At any point, you can add some blue to your green to go darker, get some teal, get some darker greens in there. If you still wanna go by the original piece and you wanna throw some yellow up here, feel free to do that too. And keep it real light up here if you want. I'm not over blending at all so a lot of this I'm just putting it on letting it be let it do what it's gonna do 
if you overblend, um, that might be your style. Maybe you want to go with that. But for something like this, where it's just really abstract and it's real um, open-ended to an idea that we're putting in the back, it, it doesn't have to be overblended. Also, if you wanted to, you can double coat this, um, let it dry, and come back in and do it again um, over top. You can do that. I'm personally not going to do that myself um, for the sake of time, but um, it is available to do. As we go down, we keep getting darker and darker. Darker and darker. And you can actually start to mix in some purple here. I've not done this before today where I added purple to a background like this, but I thought, you know, with some lavender kind of flowers, why not? You know, maybe it's, maybe there's some flowers in the back that are showing some purple. Maybe there's some essence of purple happening in the background. You can mix a little bit of purple with white. Again, if you don't have purple, you don't have to worry about using it. Um, you can use maybe some some red and blue if you have blue. Throw it in the back, add some white. Be careful of how you add blue and red because they are pretty, um, they're pretty powerful. When you put them together, uh, one takes over the other and it goes real dark. So be careful what you do there. But get it to your liking. All right. And you can still, if you want to add some bits of light in here, you can throw some white and some green and some yellows here and there. Think about where your placement of your bee is going to be. If it's right here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't overshoot the yellow. In that area, I would keep it more up this direction. And do some light shades of that dark bluish green add some white to it throw some of that in there nature is all these different colors so the background can really show a lot of different values and hues and types of colors it's very open-ended painting it's very free just throw on what you really want to throw on. And at this point, if you don't want to stick with this direction and you just want to kind of throw it every which way, that's helpful. It's a little bit of everything everywhere. going to start to bring it to life. Blue and green. Keep it dark near the bottom. You can even mix if you have green and blue and purple. Mix some green and blue and some purple. Throw it down here. Get some even darker. Don't feel like you have to over blend. We can just keep it real dark. At the rate we're going, I'm probably gonna have to buy some more too. <laughs> Go 
have some yellow in there if you like. This is your painting. I want you to fill out your environment and throw in there what you want to throw in there. If you want to throw white, throw some white. Blend it in. You can still throw some yellow down here if you like. But we really want a mixture of, of colors. So lots of dark, lots of light, lots of in between mediums. You get too many splotches just go back over top of them take as long as you can as long across the canvas as you can with your brush and that is phase one of the background for this nice painting with the bee You want to take the same brush and swivel on, on the edge here. I keep it on this edge, not on this edge. This one right here. You can actually put in some almost viney, viney um, lines. Make it look like grass or, or a lot of different things are happening in the back. While it's still wet, you can take them as high as you want. Whatever direction you want them to go in. Really just a flick of the wrist. It's not really, I'm not pressing down very hard. It's very light. Very lightly, just letting it ride off of the bristles. Now we're gonna rinse and dry that brush. And what I did with the first one was I took this real tiny brush. If you have a tiny brush, you can take a tiny brush. Do kind of the same thing. You can come in with some real nice fine lines with a nice little liner brush. Very, very tip of the brush. You won't see it right away, especially if the canvas is wet, but this will make a difference. So even though there's not a whole lot of detail in this painting, um, you can still work some fine details in between. It's not really focused on details, it's kind of focused on an idea, but even with an idea, you can still throw in some small, small details that make a huge difference. People who look for details will see this, as opposed to maybe someone who doesn't look for details. Um, might not see it till you point it out, and once you do, they're like, oh, wow. All right, so while this is wet, um, I actually take a small brush, smaller than the large one I used. This one right here. So let me show you the difference. This is the large brush we started with, and this is a smaller brush that we're going to now. And you can add some red to your plate if you'd like. And we're gonna take some white with some red. We're just gonna swoop some small flowers in here. Something in the distance that it's just something that's there. All different sizes. They can be smaller, some can be larger, some can have more red, some can have more pink or more white. Just some stuff in the distance there. Um, they can also be light blue. If you want to do some light blue flower type ideas, throw those in there too. It's a little swoop. It's almost like a U shape. Just mirror and then fill it in. You can add some more blue if you like. 
It could be whatever shape you want. It could be, you know, um, you could have petals if you, if you really like. Whatever kind of flower you want to throw in the back there. Totally up to you. Have some um, lavender ones if you like, some yellow. Whatever color that sticks out to you for this. You know, you could do orange. All I did for that was I used that edge of the brush and I smeared it in and I smeared it on each side. So if you don't have orange, just yellow and red, make orange. More yellow than red makes it brighter. Remember the brighter yellow brightens, white lightens. So I made a bright orange here. You can throw maybe a orange flower in there. Very soft on the bristles. The softer on the bristles you are, the better. Just some little background flowers, little background nothings. Um, I'm gonna go to this brush real fast and show maybe some stems from from these flowers, maybe some leaves that are on the stems. You can just kind of add them in here to your liking. I'm really just etching it in. I'm not, since the paint is still wet, just etching things into the background keeps it all at the same kind of piece so that when we put everything over top of the front it's not going to take over it too much don't have to do every one maybe just every other one or maybe just a couple of them maybe the things that are closer as opposed to the things that are further I do have another type of uh, flower that is on the other canvas. Um, I'm not sure it's a flower, but it's a, it is a plant of some kind, and it's actually got kind of these lines that come down. You can dot them or you can line them with some red. I'm not sure what they are called, sadly. But when they're bright red, they're just really nice to look at. Really nice to add to a painting. As it comes in, it gets, um, it, so in the middle it's wide, on the top it's really thin, and as it comes down further, it actually starts to thin out again. So it's, it's kind of almost like a diamond shape. You can throw them on there if you like. Some real vague stuff in the background. And if too much disappears, there's too much of that paint just kind of smeared on here lightly. Alright, so Let's see, this side over here should be pretty dry. Um, a lot of this background stuff is done uh, along the same line of time. So this kind of weird bushy idea off to the left um, is done now. And what I started to do was really kind of funny. Um, I started to do some petals and I'll show you the exact technique that I did. It's, it's kind of weird. I actually mix some pink and purple. Um, it doesn't have to be that color. It could be, you know, whatever, like maybe pink or red. Um, if you're going for the same color, it could be light purple, it could be light blue, whatever you like, it could be. And what I did was I, I made some petals like this.
and it's okay if you make it perfectly or you don't make it perfectly. What we're gonna do is kind of smear it out as we have put it on. Um, the other thing I did was I added some red and some blue. Red and blue to make just a really dark, uh, red, blue, yellow, purple, to make almost a dark brownish kind of weird color. Something like right in here. Yeah, a little bit darker. Green and red will make brown. Um, green, red, yellow will make an interesting brown. This is basically what I made, and I put it right in the center. So I started with that. I ended up I didn't like it. If you like it and you want to go with a, that kind of flower there, you can keep it. But if you like what I did on the other one, all that I did was I took a dry brush after I rinsed it out real good. And it's pretty dry. It's kind of, um, it's wet, but it's not soaking wet. And I just smeared it around. And I went into that shape. And I started to see kind of that, that plant that I don't know the name of that um, exists that's similar to the red one we did down here. I saw that in my mind when I was shaping this, so I went with it. And I let that be what it is. Um, you can add some white to it if you want. You can add some colors in there, but make sure that it's really muted. You don't really want it to stick out. You want it to be real backgroundy, almost like it's you know it's there but it's blurred in the distance. I ended up adding all kind of colors to this, so whatever you like to add, I had some light blues here and there. It's kind of like a filler. So at the same time, maybe we can start adding some of this other background stuff, uh, some of the leaves and the darker vines that are coming out. Um, I didn't have them to begin with until I looked at the piece as I was finishing it and I saw there's just way too much space up there. Um, you know, something needs to kind of deflect that and negate it and kind of direct it back toward this area where the bumblebee is with the flowers that are going to be there. So what I did was I mixed really dark colors, um, really dark greens with the blue and the green to make teals and just darker, darker colors. You know, this brown even can be used and you can use either this brush or a small brush, whatever brush you're comfortable with, you can use and just kind of bring, it doesn't have to be super detailed, just bring some leaves up here, kind of shape them out. It's almost like a teardrop with some real uh, rigid edges. Um, it can go off the canvas as well here. And just kind of hunker down from here, fill it in. And you can use whatever type of greens you like. You do lighter greens to fill them in, darker greens, whatever you're filling. Maybe I wanna go really light, add some white to that to lighten it. I hope I'm not going too fast here. Um, a lot of this has to be done while it's still wet. So um, it's kind of a time, timed game, but um, at the same time, it, it doesn't have to be. You can take your time on this. Then on the other side, um, actually in the middle, I brought one up from the middle. It was just kind of like a viney idea, so maybe something more just stretching out here. Again, if you want to go to the smaller brushes to, to make this a little bit more particular, you can.
I'm going to take a trip to this brush here. Just work on the very tip of that brush. Very tip. Whatever happens. If you want to add some decoration to that, maybe it's um, something like it has little white um, petals on it or something like that. You can do that. But it, it definitely has to stay dark in here. This needs to be dark. This is a balance that's going to happen to make everything stay where it needs to be and look the way it needs to be and hold the weight that it needs to hold. Believe it or not, when you hang a canvas, if the weight is off if in any direction, if it's too heavy over here, you're going to feel that weight when it's hanging up and you're going to feel like it needs to just fall that direction. It's really weird how, how that works. Maybe if all the weight is down here and it's really light up here, you know, that, that can bother some people. So I always try to keep the weight balanced in your painting. Maybe this will come down here a little bit. So it's just a lot of different stuff we're throwing in here. Nothing particular, nothing uh, super detailed. Just just some stuff to carry this weight that's in here. I ended up throwing um, one more leaf kind of over off in this direction. Now, well, if you end up thinking of something else you want to throw back there, I wouldn't do trees. Um, trees would be way too big uh, to put in this painting because we're so zoomed in on the bee. So, you know, if there's something else that, that's kind of, you know, I feel like I want to put this and it matches the size that we're going with here of, of things that are in the distance, feel free to do that. Um, it's very, such a wide open thing. Maybe there's plants that you like in your painting. Maybe there's... Um, other other forms of life that you can think of that I can't think of that you like to add feel free to add I'm all about everybody making this painting your own And if you're doing this with me, I would love, always, always, always love to see your final piece that you come up with. I really want to see them. So leave them in the comments of this video or, you know, any of them, honestly, it'll notify me and I'll get to see it and I'll save it. And when the studio is open again, maybe I could share, share everybody as an artist spotlight and other people can, can see what you guys have done beautiful works all right I'm actually gonna add make this a little bit bigger maybe throw another one over that way So this is all just kind of encompassing what's going to be right around here is going to keep, you know, kind of like in the um, Wizard of Oz painting, everything was pointing toward the castle, or not the castle, my bad, the city that's in the back. Um, everything was pointing in that direction. So if you've not seen that video, there's a lot of good tips about distance and um, point perspective and that kind of thing. So in this regard, Everything's kind of pointing down, kind of, you know, honing in, pushing, pushing all the attention to right here. So that's, that's where you start to realize um, how the weight and how pieces work in that you, you want to make sure you're stressing your point that you're trying to make. In my point I was trying to make is there's a really nice bumblebee right here and it's about to pollinate these flowers that are you know real nicely down here so everything up here 
you know, it doesn't need to take that attention away, but it needs to add to it and, you know, really just point to that idea. So, um, instead of the leaves being the opposite direction, I kind of kept them all, you know, kind of pointing, real, real basic idea of, you know, just the space that's being used and utilized. So, always something to keep in mind when you're coming up with a painting of your own. Um, so while these things are all drying, um, we're gonna take a trip down here and start filling in some of these. They're actually called Aster. Um, which are these lavender flowers. Uh, now, with this, I like to put on a base coat of white. I'm gonna go with this brush right here. And I like to fill in the inside first. You can have as many or as little of these as you like. I like to fill in this whole bottom area so that, again, the space and um, everything happening is balanced. Um, if we leave anything open too much down here, there's going to be just kind of a confusion that, that goes on where your eye, you know, wants to go here, but it's like, what's, what's missing down here? So I tried to cover the whole bottom with flowers, different sizes. You can spread them out accordingly. You can put them closer together if you want. The beauty of how these flowers work is that, you know, in real life, they do run into each other. And on this painting, they're going to run into each other. And no matter what happens with them running into each other, as long as we keep the direction I'm going to show you, everything's going to work out exactly as it should. So, you know, you can put as many. These are the center of the flowers. So, so far, I'm going to have one, two, three, eight, nine, about 11 flowers, 12, um, all together down here. We can cover some of this here. If you like this, you don't have to cover that, but um, I'm gonna cover mine. Just a little bit. So these are the centers of each of these little aster flowers. And what happens is each petal that comes off of them is gonna derive from the center. So if you wanna go to the center of the flower, pull it up and just pull them accordingly from the center all the way out. These almost look like little fan brush um, petals when, when it's all said and done. But they all derive from the center. And then we can actually fill in that center again. You can continue to add some more in between if you like. There's a lot of puddles. And then just come back in inside. If you want to add yellow to that, you can. They are going to be yellow uh, later on. But I accidentally dipped in some of the yellow, so that's why that happened. But you can still add that if you like. And from the center, it's all going to derive. It's good practice for some some simple ideas of flowers. Flowers are incredibly difficult when you're first painting. Even when you're not new to painting, flowers are always a challenge. So this is a nice kind of setup to the beginnings of getting into petals and how delicate you need to be with them. Everyone who knows me knows I think that painting flowers is evil. As nice as they can come out sometimes, they give you a hard time. And we do this to every single one of these. So it's going to take some time. This is just a base coat. So that when we throw the colors on, they'll actually 
lay down nicely. As you're doing this, you can decide which flower is over top of the other. Um, if it's behind, do it before you do the next one. If it's in front, do it last. And all the petals are coming from the center. Hopefully everybody else who's doing this is having not a hard time with it. <laughs> using the tip of my brush to just fan them out. If you need to practice on something before you do it on your canvas, always feel free to do so. Always feel free to practice on a plate, practice on a piece of paper, practice on something before you bring it to the final draft sometimes that that needs to happen for a technique sometimes you got to practice it before you actually go on and do it that always I'm always practicing on something else beforehand We're getting some flowers in here. I know that I missed some on the other side, but I'll come back to those. If anybody ever finds a better technique than what I'm showing, please um, feel free to comment it, uh, video it, um, let us all know kind of what you're doing to, to make something a little easier. Maybe somebody else will gravitate toward that and be able to use it as well, maybe even me. Um, there's always something to learn in a painting. No matter how many times you do it, you might find a better way. That's easier, it's more efficient, that actually might look better even. I'm going to flip down to a smaller brush now. So I'd really like for these other flowers to stay pretty, pretty small. You get some other colors in there, that's okay. 
I'm not really worried about that. Actually, the red might help a little bit. And you could even put one higher if you like. I did throw one up here. Pretty large one. And I would even like to cover kind of this area here. So I'm going to put one more over there. Right in here. Be a pretty large one as well. Let me go back to my larger brush. Larger brush. So we got a lot of flowers going on in this painting here. Again, you can have as many as you'd like, but make sure that you, you know, cover up these areas pretty well down here. It doesn't have to be completely just flowers. It can have some green behind, but you don't want to leave too much space because then we're going to have to add a lot more detail. Do one more kind of in between here. And yes, it's okay that they run into each other. If you want to make a mental note for yourself by adding some yellow in here, you can. To each individual flower, these are all going to be yellow in the center. Hopefully I don't miss any. This one there, there, there. This one right there. This one right down here. I'm gonna rinse that brush. Whoop, oh, nope, not yet. Not me anyway, I have one right there, and I have one right there. Let's see, where's the one I just saw? Right here.
these are really gonna pop out once uh, the purple is put on them. It's a real nice little um, finishing touch to these. What I also do in the meantime is that orange that you see underneath each one over in this painting. Um, it's very important. So take your red and your yellow, mix yourself an orange like we did earlier. I lost mine in the shuffle, but this orange right here, let me see if I can, there it is. It doesn't have to be dark. It could be pretty light or it could be dark. It's really up to you. Just add it to the bottoms of each, each of these areas. Kind of wraps around it. Right now it's not going to look like much, but later on it'll make a huge difference. can see I'm not I'm not really the neatest with how I'm applying it but you can be neat if you like if you'd like to grab yellow again and go in here one more time <coughs> feel free to do so So now we're gonna let those petals um, dry for a little bit and um, I'll give you guys a minute to catch up here while I prep for the bee. know when I'm teaching in in class um, I'll be just seven steps ahead just because I've done this so much and I'll have other people trying to catch up so I'm very aware of that and I will not be too fast here maybe I'll add some details here to my leaf
All right. So for the B, um, I'll explain some things. I didn't use any black in the actual painting um, at all. The example over there, I did not use any black whatsoever. Um, I actually kind of went with what's going on in this piece. There's a lot of greens and purples, yellows, you know. So I picked purple and I picked yellow and um, kind of an orange. A little bit of white um, and some reds and blues. So kind of everything that we've been using other than green, I put into my little bumblebee there. Um, you can use black if you'd like to, I'd say be very careful. Um, definitely mix it with some dark brown. Uh, there's a lot of options here. You can use dark brown, you can use um, a little bit of black with a mixture of brown, mixture of, of anything like that. I actually mixed red and purple to make the bee that's on the example over there. So um, let me kind of make that mixture again. Here it ended up being this right here. I thought almost like a really, really dark maroon would go well with this painting. So we have purples down here. We have some purple in the back. We have some reds, you know, going on. Um, and then we got some dark greens. So I really thought some really dark maroon might be a nicer, nicer edge to the bee than just adding black. But whatever, you know, kind of color that you like, you know, whether it's the brown or the black or, you know, whatever you're trying to exhibit in your piece yourself, you know, feel free to do that. Add a little bit of green to this to darken a little bit more. So the red and the purple to mix to a maroon and a little bit of green to take it down. Just a little bit. And the main thing to think about this, as close as we are to the bumblebee, they're really kind of furry. So when I'm actually coming into starting the head around this area here. Let's put a circle, pretty large. As large as you want your bumblebee to be. Um, and I'm actually gonna lightly put some fuzz on them. Just drag that out lightly as you come up with the brush, you're lifting it off the canvas. There's a real furry guy. gonna see through him a little bit that's okay a little fuzzy guy um, what I ended up doing and I would almost suggest to do is I didn't divide it into levels here I just did the whole body real fuzzy as you come down you know, the body's gonna be larger than the head Keep brushing that out. Bumblebees are pretty large, so you know, he's gonna have a big body. That's okay. Just keep it furry as it comes down. Fill it in on the inside. If you want to let that dry and then coat it again, you can. Because you're going to see through this a little bit. And um, not everybody likes that kind of idea. So if you want to let it dry, go over top of that again. Feel free to do that. I'm going to see what I can get away with here. If I can add a, another layer real fast. A little bit. That's what's cool about painting. You know, you might see something in real life that is black, um, but 
I guess the graphic designer in you will kind of take note of what's in the what you're doing already or what's another way that you can approach it that's still along the lines of showing the darkness but it doesn't have to be quite black um, you know you can get creative with it and come up with your own kind of spin and um, so that I thought was real cool with this kind of maroon idea instead of it being all dark black like we obviously know in real life it's black fur but sometimes they're really shiny so the things around them can reflect on them and make different colors happen in that fur so even though maybe there's not too much maroon happening I thought red purple has happened lavenders happening around here um, dark green you know maroon's a cool idea in there I, I thought what's a cool color that kind of goes along with those that's pretty dark stands out kind of gets the point across I thought maybe a dark purple maroon so I'm only saying that because um, I always wondered how you know how do designers how do artists come up with kind of throwing this color in there that it works but you would have no idea how to come up with it you know so this is my rendition of that you know I could be wrong I could be right I really don't know but um, taking note of just everything that I painted uh, the things that stick out to me these are one of those things make sure he's real fuzzy don't 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 miss out on the fuzz I think that that really helps this piece come to life okay, we're actually gonna add more details to the fuzz later on but this is the beginning of that So we'll let this dry a little bit and I'm gonna come to this real skinny liney brush if you don't have one of these I would say to get one for sure but you can still go with a smaller brush of any kind that just has a nice tip on it use that tip very gently very you know just grazingly and start with the white and I'm basically just gonna make a V on the back coming out And if it starts to disappear as it goes out further, that's good. That's what you want it to do, just real light. I'm gonna make a couple of them. Come to the other side and make a couple going that way. You can see that it's in flight. So I like to kind of zigzag up and down with that same color. A little bit. It doesn't have to be super showy. Even with the, some of that maroon. Come in there with some of that maroon. Zigzaggy. Zigzag it. Up and down, up and down. If you want to be reflective and, and social, show some greens. Always get into those tongue twisters. You can throw some greens in there if you like, a little bit. And lastly, you can even come in an outline, um, kind of like you threw the the V's down here. You can kind of throw some some dark. I use that maroon color. Throw some of those back in. These are the wings, the wings of the bee that are flying. They are currently moving, showing that motion with the zigzaggy nature, with not completely finishing out the full wing. And after that step, we're going to let that dry for a little bit. I think we can take a trip back down to these, these petals of these uh, aster flowers. I hope I'm saying that right. I, I've never heard them spoken out loud, so. Um, it was spelled A-S-T-E-R. Maybe it's Aster. I'm not sure, but 
These are the names of the flowers that we're working with. I'm gonna mix some white with some purple to make that lavender color. Um, if you don't have purple, blue and red and white will make a lavender. I thought lavender was a good, a good tone for everything happening around. We're just gonna follow these petals with that that color. If you want to add a little deeper purple to it, feel free. It brings them out real nicely. You know, make these colors the way you like them. I like to cover up background things a lot of the time um, <clears throat> just to show the consistency of everything that's happening um, but sometimes people will say oh I don't want to cover that up so don't feel like you have to cover things up that you don't want to cover but also be aware of, of how you're setting up your painting as you're going along so that you don't end up covering it. Like I said, these flowers, to the final step, they don't really look um, quite the way you want them until until the last step. So, um, you know, if you've gotten to this point and have hated them, <laughs> that's all right. Just know it's not a final, not a final touch until you finally touch it the way that it should be. There are ugly parts of every painting, and that's during the process. And that's okay. I don't mind getting some of that orange in the petals there. Maybe it's reflective. Maybe it's kind of showing on the petals a little. Um, also it adds some, some interesting, kind of an interesting look, kind of something that, you know, grabs your attention, not too much, but just enough, and, um, keeps everything in line. Oop. you go into the bee that's okay we're actually going to cover them again so no worries the dark purple and the light purple they actually work hand in hand so i would say work with both do the lights do the darks these can stick out pretty well You can see I'm really still not being the neatest with these. Um, I'm really kind of slapping them on this, kind of the style of this and the nature of this painting. Uh, but if you want to be neat, feel free to be. Feel free to do as much detail as you like. These are in the foreground, so you can add as much as you like. These flowers here are pretty forgiving of all the ones I've ever done. Um, they allow a lot of room. So I think they're a good practice for starting out on flowers, getting into the petals.
make sure you hit all your flowers. I don't want to leave any of these behind. Got our flowers down. Again, I will give you some time here before I move on so you can fill those in. Maybe hit these yellows again while we're waiting. My bee guy is still drying a little bit, so I'll let that happen. Some of this orange again if you want. Another tip actually for beginning flowers is I had so much trouble with colored flowers so what I did to do some practice to to get them down a little bit easier in my mind was I did black and white versions of flowers um, which I have at my studio uh, maybe I could put up a picture when I go back in there but um that made a world of difference for me because instead of focusing on colors and all the different ones you can find in the flowers, I had just focused on shading. So, you know, the white and the black, and then you have the grays in between. Um, I just got to focus on all the shading, kind of see where it happens. And then, you know, over time, you can apply that with color. So, um, I have a black and white painting I'm gonna be showing tomorrow. It's a swan with the wing is spread out. Um, there was someone who posted this picture on Facebook and it just inspired me greatly. So um, this is one I'm gonna show tomorrow. Uh, and I will kind of go over some of those ideas, not so much flower wise, but with the swan in the background and everything's happening in it. Um, it's, a good, it's a good way to practice painting. If you don't wanna deal with colors right away, black and white painting is actually really good uh, foundation and fundamentals. So, um, yeah, that'll be happening tomorrow, probably 3.30 p.m., um, as long as everybody's good for that. I'll be showing a swan in, in black and white. Um, should be fun. Uh, I'm gonna make it as simple as possible to kind of convey over the camera here. But, um, let's get back to this bee. First thing I'm gonna do is lay on some of this yellow and I'm gonna add white to the yellow. So I'm gonna lighten it up a lot, a lot, a lot. Let's see and make sure this isn't, all right, very good. I'm gonna go along with, kind of wraps around the neck almost like a scarf, but it's gonna still be real fuzzy. So fuzz it out, fuzz that. Fuzz, fuzz, fuzz. And that'll be the top. Now we're gonna come down a little ways here. And we're gonna throw on 
kind of the lower section. Still fuzzing it out. Kind of the stomach is here and it's not gonna wrap all the way down there. It's actually gonna stop about there. Fuzz it out, fuzz, fuzz, fuzz. Never, ever, ever forget your fuzz. That technique is so important when you're showing something that's very fuzzy. And bumblebees, they are, they're very fuzzy. Awesome. So let's talk about the eye. Um, I, again, did not use black. Um, but we do want to go darker or different. Um, because sometimes, sometimes it doesn't have to be darker necessarily. But the idea is to get it different. So what I did was I used red and blue. Red, blue, and purple, I would say. Let me get some blue on here. I'm gonna mix a super duper dark color. Dark as I could possibly get, even green. Throw some green in there. Throw some red and some purple. And take it way down. If you have brown or black that you want to throw in there, you can add that too. It took me a minute to get it real dark. Even something like this here would be fine. Something different from that maroon we used. Alright, and then up here, I'm actually going to put the eye. Fairly large. I hope that's seeable in the camera. Let me kind of bring it closer here. See if it will take... And there we go. Just something different. So that it stands out. While I have that color handy, I'm going to take my super tiny brush here. Super tiny. I'm going to put the antennas coming out on both sides. This one's going to be a little larger since it's closer. Well, not so much because it's further. And then same thing for kind of the mouth. Just comes out a little bit here. I threw some yellow by accident earlier, but I kind of like what it did. So you can throw a little bit Maybe it was, got itself in the flower a little too much. <laughs> Add some, let me see if I need to, some white. The white is going to really set the eye in. So with this tiny brush again, um, what we do is we put kind of the, Circular motion there, maybe something small going on here. Dry the brush off a little bit. And just throw some different kind of reflective colors in here. I'm gonna switch up to this brush and push that all in. So kind of scrub brushing it in there. If that's too much for that top layer, you can do the same thing with it, with this large white dot here. Or if you like it, you can keep it. You can also kind of spread that around. Eyes are so much fun. They are one of my favorite subjects to paint. Um, so much to them that you can honestly do. So many colors you can add, like for example, um, if you wanted to throw, maybe it sees some of the leaf. Some of the leaves are showing or something. You can add a little bit of green, you can add a little bit of blue. Throw it in there. Wipe it off and then just spread that around the same way.
very vaguely it's going to be in there, but it's going to make a huge difference when it dries. It's very nice. So, um, one of the arms, one of the legs of this bee, I'm going to go back to this dark color we made. If you like the maroon or you like that super dark, whichever you like, you go with. Um, but it actually comes from up here, near kind of what I would think is the neck. And the first leg comes out a little bit. On the other side, same thing. But it starts to transfer to kind of that orange color. So go into an orange, yellow and red. They make the orange that we need. On the very tips, they kind of, kind of have a little bit of a, a fork over the road that comes out. So they kind of have these little nodules. I'm going to try to brighten that up a little so it's easier to see. I'll add some white, a little bit of white. So, come out. This is just so everyone can see, but you still want that kind of orange, that golden color. And down here, it's almost like, um, I don't know if it's a large hip bone or something to that effect. We're going to need that golden color again, yellow and red, to make a nice, almost gold. And that's going to be about here. You can actually continue a small line for the next leg coming down. Does the same thing the top two do have done. We can still throw some dark dark in there a little bit. Up here is gonna be a little thicker than down here is gonna be real thin. And again, if you want to, you know, lighten some of that with a little bit of white, you can. Kind of just here. I use a little bit of yellow with white. But you can use still some of that kind of goldish color. Even up here a little bit. Alright. And my final touches for, for this bee is, um, first of all down here, it actually goes a little bit lighter. So a lot of white with some yellow, a lot of white. And we're going to keep it real furry. Like I'm, I'm going to put that down and I'm actually going to spread it with a dry brush. So dry brush, spread that. It's lighter than this yellow. It's almost like a white, but not quite. And lastly, I'm going to take this brush here again with um, white for this area, probably a light, light yellow that we used here for in these areas, and probably a almost this color, but darker, maybe in purple. Maybe we'll go purple. Let me see. Maybe I'll do some purple. Yeah, and very lightly, we just stroke each individual hair into that. So same thing, same way that we did the first time with a larger brush, but this time it's just a small brush. We're doing each individual hair that's happening on there. Let me get the white so that this is easier to see. 
what we got in here. So individual haze. It's okay if they run into each other some. Same thing on the yellow, just a lighter yellow. Same thing these individual hairs. Very tip of the brush, just wisping it on. Still gonna stick with that. I like the purple on the maroon. I think that's a nice kind of thing. If you're doing, you know, black or brown, um, and you mixed your black, you can use um, you can use dark gray or like something darker, maybe some dark brown. I really like this purple on the maroon. Might not be ever so realistic, however. It works with this piece. So once you have all these steps down, um, you've got the painting and I'm actually gonna sign. Uh, I, I'll probably use purple. On this bottom right corner. Um, I hope this wasn't too difficult of a painting at all. I hope it was a nice kind of break into something naturey, something with flowers, something with a subject that has you know more detail, um, something with some direction where you know, everything's pointing and encompassing the main idea. Um, if anybody has any questions let me know um, thank you all so much for sharing uh, me going on my live streams thank you so much for supporting for watching uh, for being a part of um, just everything thank you so much it means everything to me and um, uh, that is not said with with any light um, it's not said lightly <laughs> so thank you so much it really means everything um, We'll continue to do this as long as everybody wants and um I like like i said tomorrow we're doing some black and white it's gonna be a swan i cannot wait um it's gonna be just a blast so thank you so much if anyone has questions if you did this piece i'd love to see it um other than that i will i will uh, watch the comments and i will see everybody tomorrow bye